Hi, good morning. I'm Shell Hunter, Senior Product Manager here at Registers of Scotland. Um, a very warm well welcome, first of all, to our very first Register of Deeds specific webinar. It's Register of Deeds a look ahead. We're delighted so many of you have taken the time to join us this morning. The next slide, please, Marco. So the learning objective shown here on screen um, will be achieved before the end of the webinar. We're going to look at reimagining our registration processes, how to submit to the new register of deeds and how you can prepare in the digital world and hopefully get some of your thoughts and feedback. So as Marco said, I've listed my colleagues that are helping me present the webinar today and um, to kick us off, I'm going to hand over to uh, David Lugton. Thanks very much, Cheryl. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Lugton and I'm a team lead in the Chancery and Judicial registers or CADGER team. Um, we're delighted you have joined us today to learn a little more, bit more about the Register of Deeds and the changes we are making to improve it. What is the Register of Deeds? The Register of Deeds is a perpetual archive and safe deposit for important legal documents that may be lost if left in private hands. <clears throat> the Register's full name is the Register of Deeds and Probative Writs in the Books of Council and Session. And the Register of Deeds contains original documents, most commonly wills, leases, minutes of agreement. We only register original documents that are in self-proving form, meaning we can't accept electronic copies or orig of original paper documents, for example, PDFs of wet signed deeds. The intended purpose of the Register is to keep the original deed for either preservation or preservation and execution. Preservation means we retain the deed for safekeeping, and then once registered, we provide an extract which can, you can use in place of the original. Preservation execution, in certain circumstances, grants authority for lawful execution of the deed and is equivalent to a decree from the court of session. There's an average of 54,000 deeds registered annually in the Register of Deeds, and at present, around 25% of these are rejected due to administrative errors. Uh, I think the next slide, and there's a number of challenges with the current submission and registration process. The current way of communicating with our customers are not efficient and cause delays to registration. Deeds are sent to registers of Scotland with varying levels of information in different formats. Customers offer sending more information as needed, which requires interpretation and analysis. The submission and registration processes are not joined up or optimal, making it time consuming to register. Rejections are handled manually by colleagues and require customer contact and liaison, which with further delays registration. These ways of working are no longer sustainable and we'd like to share with you the plans to improve the register of deeds. I'd like to hand you back to Cheryl now who will explain more. Thanks very much, Davey. Um, so Registers of Scotland are a future focused and digitally ambitious organisation. The current Register of Deeds sits on a 25 year old legacy system which cannot be changed to meet industry needs or Register of Scotland's digital sustainability ambitions. The registers are oldest that we hold with its origins in the 1500s and there are just over 1.3 million documents existing in a mostly paper based archive. Our primary driver for investment in this change is to leverage new regulations, making it possible to register born digital documents in the Register of Deeds for the first time. The regulations also allow for the provision of digital extracts. The new regulations will come into effect from the 1st of October this year and permit for a digital deed to be registered in the Register of Deeds where that deed is in the form of a PDF and authenticated by a qualified electronic signature. It's important to note that the regulations permit, but do not mandate for these deeds to be digital documents. ROS will continue to accept paper principal deeds for registration alongside born digital documents. Secondary drivers for the investment in this change are to provide customers and colleagues with an improved registration experience by building a replacement application flow and register, then reducing the technical risk of the legacy technology by decommissioning the old register and focusing on building out the new. Next slide, please, Marco. Over the last couple of years, we've successfully transitioned the Register of Judgments and the Register of Inhibitions from paper registers to entirely digital services supported by experienced, multidisciplinary and enduring product teams. The registers are now cloud hosted using the latest technology, meaning that registers of Scotland no longer need to worry about all the nuts and bolts associated with keeping the lights on and instead can focus on the services that we provide to our customers. The registers we hold can easily be improved to continue to meet customer needs now and in the future. Next slide, please. 
There are many benefits to reimagining the registers we hold for both our customers, and next slide, and also for our organisation. Unlocking all these benefits starts with you, our customers, and the route into the register. To explain a bit, a bit more about that, I'm going to hand over to Peter McFadden. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, so again, as you've mentioned, we've we've done a lot to enhance and improve the existing registers, and that's touched on a lot of technical changes for our colleagues. But again, um, we identified an opportunity to enhance the route into register feeds for you, our external customers. Um, so we've developed a new web app, which I'm just going to share with you just now, which would be essentially the replacement for the existing CNS1 application form. I'll just give that a second to make sure it's come through OK. OK, perfect. So this will be available through both online services account users and also through the Register Scotland website. And the perspective I'm showing it from this morning is that of a logged in online services account user. So there's some really simple enhancements we can move now by automating some of the processes. So, for example, we've managed to pre-populate both agent name and the email address of the logged in e-services user, uh, online services user, sorry. Um, now, this is going to be really imperative going forward because this is where all communication will be sent to the email address associated with the account. And just as you would with any other sort of digital submission, you'd select the relevant FAS number as well. So I'll select this one here. And any optional fields will always be bracketed optional afterwards, so we don't need to worry about those just now for the sake of the demo. Moving through here to the data information, this will probably look quite familiar to the existing CNS1 form. We've been able to make some upgrades and also remove some uh, limitations on the existing form as well. So, for example, the current deed list here is only populated with, I believe, to be the top 100 available. However, I think um, our analysts has done some great work to, to reduce the numbers, but I think there's around about 1,500 potential deed types in total. So this is basically mapped from our internal system as well. So we've got all available here, um, which can be searched by um, anything you type in. Um, for the sake of the demo, we'll go well just now. Oops, sorry. Um, and again, going forward, if there's any new deed types that arise, this will also update automatically as we make those improvements in-house. And so again, most of this will be quite familiar, perhaps some changes to wording to make things a little bit more explicit around the number of extracts. For example, you know, one is always included within the fee. So if you were to put any more in here, this would be charged above and beyond that initial registration fee. Again, something else that's asked on that existing CNS1 form is just the title number. And we don't need to put this just now, but the LBTT as well. The party details is something that's still recorded in the CNS1 at the moment, but we've improved the way that we capture that information, making it really explicit again if it's person or organisation. So I'll begin to just populate this information here with Stephen Strange. And again, you'd have the ability to remove or change anything here, should you wish to do so. I will also put in our organisation here. Perfect. Now, the additional information, again, is something available in the existing CNS1, but what we're trying to do here is make clear that this is where you would put any information above and beyond what you would put in this form here. So anything that you may have previously put on a covering letter, this is where we'd ask you to include that. But again, one of the most kind of important things to, to encourage us now is that this is more of a concept. You know, we're, we're happy with the way it looks just now and it's, it's a good replacement. But again, if there's anything we could improve or any other information you feel is imperative to capture during this process rather than in a covering letter, again, we're happy to take on any feedback and, and include that in here. Now, something that's remained constant throughout this demo just now is this number here within the URL. What we're referring to is an alpha code. Now, this is going to be a unique number for every application that comes through, and we'll capture this on our end as well, so we can basically read anything that's been put in. So when you send in the information to us on the original deeds, we can tie the two up together nice and easily and make sure the data is accurate. I appreciate there's a lot that's gone on here. So we've got basically a final screen whereby you'll be able to change, remove, or add anything that you may have missed out during the process. Now, we don't quite have the full end-to-end -end application yet. As I said, this is still just a concept, so I'm not going to be able to hit that Submit to Ros button here at the bottom. So if I could ask Marco to please take over the screen once again, and we'll just talk you through that last bit of the slide. Perfect, thank you. So if I can try not to lose my train of thought. So once you select the uh, Submit to ROS button, you'll be taken to this form here, which is essentially just outline of those next steps for you about downloading and printing off the page, sending it in essentially as replacement for your cover letters um, with the original and signed documents as soon as possible. Um, they'll then be reviewed before they're submitted. And again, the email address I mentioned at the very start of the process will be the kind of point of contact for 
any registration confirmation emails or any other correspondence um, anywhere in between. And I guess talking about kind of what happens next, I'll hand over to my colleague Kira, please. Thank you, Peter. Right, so I will now talk you through the next few slides on digital extracts and how you can start getting ready for the new changes to register of deeds. So we're working on developing digital extracts for this register. The example shown here is a blurred version of a deed, but it's just to show you the similar formatting to the current paper extract. There'll be no cover or fly sheet. It will contain the preamble with the minute number on top and the docket with the cadre officer signature at the bottom, along with the register of deeds digital stamp. So digital extracts will also have a ROS digital certificate applied to them, showing the reader that the document originated from ROS and has not been amended since issue. Um, also working in the same format, self-service copy deeds for registered deeds is a new feature currently available on Scotless for Scotless business customers. So you can search and instantly download deeds in the same format on register of deeds now. I can flick to the next slide. So um, this is the first look on how you will receive your digital extract. So as you've submitted an email address, once registered, you'll immediately receive an email confirmation, just like this one here shown. Um, and it will have the download links for the invoice and the digital extract. So this will be instead of the acknowledgement letters that you receive now. The next slide. So what you can do to get ready. So any changes to the register of deeds will be updated on our registered of deed page on our website. Uh, once the new registered deeds application that Peter just went through goes live, you'll be able to access that from our website. So if you already have an account, you can access this from your online services account. And if you don't, you'll still be able to access the form from our website. So keep an eye on this page and any changes on comms will be, will be left there. Okay, so the next thing you can do to get ready is avoid common rejection reasons. So this will obviously be um, a huge thing for, for everyone listening. But um, yeah, so we want to get your application accepted first time and that will save you time in resubmitting it and time on the cadres team. So the, the most common rejection reason is around the signing of documents. So anything that does not conform to the requirements of Writing Act of Scotland 1995. So the main issue around signature is the witness signature and address not present or does not comply with the act. Missing or incorrect capacities, missing signature, signing with initials only or the surname first and photocopies. So all signatures must be wet signatures and not a photocopy of signature. Uh, okay, the second, uh, second most high rejection reason is annexations not referred to in the deed or problems with schedule. So if the deed refers to a document that is annexed to the deed, such as a plan, schedule or certificate of confirmation, but is not annexed to the deed, then it is rejected. We look for inconsistencies as well, such as when the deed specifies the number of parts in the schedule, but it doesn't correspond to the actual number of parts annexed. Quality of documents, so documents submitted should be legible to read and in good shape so they can be scanned properly and preserved better. Issues with colour copies, if you want colour copies, then you need to send in the correct amount of copies to match each extract requested and ensure they are true copies of the original. And finally, administrative errors, so pages missing, anything that does not add up in the body of the deed or information appears incorrect. If the carrier officers are in doubt, they will reject and return the deed. So in summary, keep up to date with the changes on our homepage. Um, you can open an online account, business account, if you're a business customer, if uh, you don't already have one, just contact our finance department. So the email's on screen and avoid common rejection reasons. So your application is accepted first time. Uh, we'll send this deck out to you as well. So you can have a copy of our top five, um, but yeah, happy to discuss further. And I will pass over to Cheryl. Thanks very much, Kira. That's great. Um, so yeah, looking ahead, so the Register of Deeds is founded on registering signed principal probative documents. This differs from our existing digital submission services in that PDF copies of original paper documents will not be accepted. We will soon be opening up the Register of Deeds to preserve born digital documents, which are authenticated by a qualified electronic signature or QES. Only born digital documents with this qualified electronic signature will be accepted. So to help prioritise what us as a, as a product team work on next, um, we'd really like to understand a little bit more about our customers' readiness for submitting digitally born documents. So we'd like you now to take part in a couple of 
interactive polls um, and share your thoughts. So that's the first poll on screen now, and it should be launching as well. It should just come up as a little pop up uh, on your screen. Again, apologies if you're using it on mobile phone, uh, it definitely won't be working. And then the answers will come through in the chat as well, so you'll see how everyone else has answered. I'll leave that open for just a little while, but uh, so you can vote at any point in the chat. I'll also launch the second poll, um, which is this one right here. And it's how likely are you to submit a digital born deed signed by QES to the register of deeds? And those are both open just now, and I'll leave them open for a little while. Okay, thanks very much everyone for responding. We've got we've got a good number of responses. Um, do feel free to answer it in the chat as well, of course, uh, if you prefer to do it that way or if the poll's not working for you. As we can see, teams can be a little bit temperamental at times, but I'll leave those open and hand back to you, Cheryl. Yeah, so next slide, please. I think this is just a reach out for, um, yeah. Advocates that want to take part in our user research and help shape our journey, and um, we'll hand over to Kia. Yes, so uh, my email address is on screen there. So please contact me if you'd like to be involved in our upcoming user research sessions. We'd love to have you included to help shape uh, the changes in Register of Deeds. Um, and if if you think any colleagues might want to be involved as well, just pass on my email address to them, and it'll also go back. Uh, it'll go out tomorrow in an email, uh, so you'll have a copy of it too. But yeah, that's we'd we'd really like to get your help. And just to, just to echo that, working kind of hand in hand with our customers over the last um, little while, especially during a global pandemic, has really helped shape some of our um, very successful digital submission services to make sure that we're not building for you, that we're building with you to help meet your needs as well. So yeah, if if you do have any capacity to be involved in user research, then uh, Kira and the team will look after you. <laughs> 